It's Friday, January the 20th, and I thought I would break into talking about um, step parenting and co parenting by doing a quick Google search and finding some websites with tips on step parenting and co parenting, and then giving commentary on what those lists say. The first website I came across is Hand in Hand Parenting.org. Uh, the title of the article is Making a Good Mix, Seven Tips for Step Parenting and Blended Families. <clears throat> Excuse me. Number one, focus on individual relationships. Yeah, well, I mean, that's pretty common, isn't it? It's common sense. It should be common sense. The relationship you have with your partner is of utmost importance. The uh, relationship you have with your ex is important as well. Relationships with each individual child is also quite important. Number two, support children in their transitions. Again, that's pretty common sense. I mean, it's not easy to be to introduce a new person into a child's life and have them fully accept them right away. Three, use laughter to build closeness and reduce tension. Yeah. <laughs> Four, find someone to listen to you. I guess that's okay as long as you're not using that individual as like a, a venting board where you're complaining about your partner or complaining about your kids because that just negativity breeds negativity. I really feel that's true. <clears throat> and I really don't think you should be um, negative talking your partner to anyone aside from your partner. When you do that, you just get one-sided advice based on the, the information that you have presented to the situation. So it's not going to be fair advice and you're painting your partner in a poor light and it just creates a bad situation all around. Number five, find activities that unite, not alienate, stepchildren and step parents. That's good. Like outdoor activities, board games, things like that. It's always good to find something fun to bond, to bond over. Because bonding isn't always that easy with other people's children, especially if they're older when you guys get together. Number six, always speak of other parents with respect. <sighs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You really need to be respectful of the other parents. Seven, find respite from the storm. Even the most dedicated step parent can get exhausted, overwhelmed, and on the way to burnout. That goes with parents as well. Find a way to make sure that you're taking care of yourself. Otherwise, you, there's no way you can take care of other people. Okay, well that's, that's the seven tips that that person had. Pretty basic relationship advice right there. Second article I've come across is heartyourfamily.com. 10 tips for co-parenting and blended families. Number one, learn the art of forgiveness. I think forgiveness is a pretty important skill to have. You don't want to build resentment. resentment. You don't want to be treating people with tension. The home should be a happy place. No matter what kind of a day you've had, when you come home, you come home with a smile. You greet your loved ones with a smile. If you don't do that, you're creating a hostile environment. You can single-handedly set the mood of the home by being a positive, being a positive person, being happy, being kind and gentle. Number two, collaborate with your ex. Yep. Two people made a human being. Not one. Two people did. You don't have to agree with them, but it's not 100% your choice. There are two people involved. You get 50% of a say, and the other parent gets 50%. Doesn't matter how involved they are in the children. They are 50% the other parent. Whether you like it or not, you don't have to agree with them, but you have to respect that. Number three, blended family means blended everything. Try to keep everything between both houses the same. Oh, yes, please, please do that. Nothing bothers me more than when there's like a 50-50 uh, parent co-parenting schedule where the kids go one week at one house and one week at another and the parents prevent the children from bringing their belongings in between the two homes. If you're buying something for your child, you're buying it for the child, not your house. So like good sweaters, good jackets, good shoes, whatever it might be, it's for the kid, it's not for the home. So stop it. <laughs> Four, don't leave discipline at the doorstep. You have to be consistent. It's best if you can be consistent between two households, but you actually, yeah, you have to be consistent in your discipline. Your partner, the step parent, needs to discipline your children. You need to be on board with that. Hopefully you've picked a partner who is worthy of that position. If you have not, then perhaps you should rethink things. Because you need to be able to trust that they're going to make the right parenting choice. You've invited them into your life. You've invited them into your child's life. Keep it on schedule. So keep the schedule similar between the two homes if possible. That's one thing we don't do well with because at my house, my youngest's bedtime is 7.30. At his dad's house, his bedtime is closer to 6. 
which I think is just way too early. We're not always home and fed by six o'clock at our house, so it just doesn't work. For 10 years, the bedtime was always 7.30. Number six, let the kids have a say. You should absolutely listen to what your kid has to say. Doesn't have to mean that your decision is gonna change based on what they say, but they should be heard, they should feel heard. Seven, the comfort of the home. This talks about um, fun tradition, keeping the home home. Yeah, I guess that's okay. Eight, make parent meetings. Make a time to meet with your ex face-to-face -to, -face to talk about your child and parent concerns. Oh uh, yeah, if an issue comes up, you should be able to meet with your ex. And keep it child-centered, which is number nine. Yeah, absolutely. You don't need to talk about how great Uncle Jack's doing or anything like that. Just talk about the kids and leave it at that. Walk the talk. Show your kids how much you respect your ex. Never talk negatively about the other parent, even if your child initiates it. Dead on. No matter what kind of a human being they are, or how questionable of a human being they are, your kid is still half that person. So when you're complaining about your ex, you're complaining about your kid. And that's just not cool. ScaryMommy.com has an article called 10 Things Nobody Tells You About Having a Blended Family. Number one, you will have a much more difficult time putting your marriage first. I don't necessarily agree with that. Once you settle into routines, it's easy to put your marriage first, your relationship first. And I believe that you should. You're not going to retire with your children. You're not going to parent with your children. You're parenting and that's like the ultimate role. And you need to be able to be on board with your partner. So put your relationship first. Number two, you are more set in your ways than you realize. Absolutely. If you've been a single parent for any amount of time, you are set in your way. You need to be able to take criticism from your partner. You need to be able to take a step back and realize that there are times when you are trying to control a situation, when you don't necessarily have to control a situation. Actively try not to be set in your Children like parenting, they're fluid. You can't have the same approach for every child at every time. It's fluid, so you can't be set in your way. Three, you will have a hard time not comparing this life to the life you had before. That's like true with all relationships and situations. Four, you will be jealous of the ex. Maybe. Five, you will love their children, the other person's children. Yeah, it, hopefully. <laughs> so eventually, hopefully, you will learn to love the other kids. Six, you will never be comfortable with even the slightest negative comment about your kids, even if it comes from the man who you promised to love no matter what. I think that's true. The, the real issue is how do you respond to that? Do you respect their opinion? Negative comments always hurt when it's about your children. But that doesn't mean that you have to respond emotionally to comments. You can be like, ooh, oh, yeah, yeah, you know what? you're right and then go seven you forgive easier i think so eight you will be disappointed that there isn't the big fuck i don't really know what they're saying with that one. number nine you'll become more private about things i don't think that's true i think if anything i've become more open Ten, you will have no roadmap well that's that's parenting in a nutshell isn't it all very important concepts to think about before you step into a, a co-parenting or step parenting relationship i think everyone's different in how they do things so i'd love to hear what kind of situation you are in, what your biggest challenge has been, what piece of advice would you give to other potential step-parents or co-parents. Comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week.